Uh, so I'll be talking about surfactants. It's cool that uh, Juni did adsorbent before because I'll be mentioning something about adsorption uh, in this. So first, like, just what is a surfactant? Well, a surfactant is defined as something that will lower the surface tension of a liquid that it's in. This can be modeled in the Gibbs isotherm equation for this. Just to give them some background. Don't actually. Not particularly important, but <laughs> basically what it is is a differential function which relates the surface tension of just a liquid or a solution with an arbitrary coefficient. You don't need to know it as it's the surface excess, if you really want to know, and the derivative of the chemical potentials of what's in what basically what the surfactant is in solution. So a surfactant, most of the time, is an amphiphilic substance. So we've encountered this before in a phospholipid. Basically what it has is a hydrophobic head, hydrophilic, or hydrophilic head, hydrophobic tail. So the one I use is sodium stearate, which is over here. Uh, I prepared it in two ways. Uh, one of them was in a purified form, which I just neutralized stearic acid with uh, sodium hydroxide uh, to get water and sodium stearate. That didn't work so well since it wasn't very soluble. The other way I did it was I did a sup saponification where I had some triglycerides, which I suppose had uh, stearic acid as a fatty acid chain, and then got sodium stearate out of saponifying that in a chemical reaction. So when in water, or just in solution in general, uh, surfactants, uh, it's kind of cut off, surfactants will form these things called micelles. So what a micelle is, is an aggregation of these uh, amphiphilic substances uh, into a hydrophilic head on the outside and the hydrophobic tail on the inside, therefore segregating the aqueous solution, which would be water, with something on the inside, which can be anything, which is oil. This is how soaps work. And uh, if you're doing the option H, further human physiology, this is what a bio salt does in, uh, to digest lipids. So another thing that can happen with surfactants, and indeed this is how they change uh, surface tension, is uh, surfactants will actually adsorb onto a gas layer in the liquid gas interface. Uh, they do this through forming this sort of arrangement where the hydrophilic head is uh, oriented towards the water and the hydrophobic uh, nonpolar tail is kind of oriented towards the air. So if you can see, like, kind of in the arrangement, if you see this is water, and this would be, for example, sodium stearate, which is the one I use, uh, the water molecules are actually segregated, kind of, uh, because they're because these things are in the way, because these hydrophobic, uh, right, rather hydrophilic heads are in the way. So if you know surface tension, it's caused by cohesive forces be between water molecules. In this sort of arrangement, there are no cohesive forces within the water molecules, so the surface tension is actually decreased. So for my bio, I the first one. Uh, I did this, uh, I, I made a surfactant, sodium stearate, put it in water and see how this would affect the growth or the population decrease of duckweed, which is an aquatic plant, uh, <coughs> over a period of about a week. So not too surprisingly, with high uh, surfactant concentrations, lots of, basically no duckweed were left after a couple of days. Though one thing was somewhat surprising, for these three, it was observed that the duckweed was actually going underneath the surface of the liquid. So duckweed remain on the surface of the liquid because of the property of surface tension, meaning they can actually just, you know, float, as you would, on top, on the surface. So the stoma, the stomata are open, they can still transpire, and, and stuff like that. So for these three, the, the actual surface of the duckweed were underneath the water, they were submerged, so it's pretty obvious to see that they would just die off. However, for these two, for these two trials, the surface of the duckweed was still above the water, meaning they could still transpire. However, the presence of surfactants still actually led them to show an increased uh, rate of population decrease, meaning more and more duckweed were dying off. This is kind of showing some implications for the effect of surfactants on actually the plant's roots' ability to actually take in water. This could be, again, due to adsorption of surfactant molecules onto the surface of root hairs, therefore inhibiting uh, just the uptake of water. This is all hypothetical. Uh, I'd like to investigate in the future, but I didn't have enough time. So 
So what are some real life applications of this? So you guys all know oil spills in water. It's pretty nasty. So again, going back to the human biochemistry thing, so surfactants are actually used from the liver in bile to help with the digestion of lipids by kind of segregating lipids into small things. This actually happens because they form a colloid, which is a colloidal suspension of emulsified lipids within water. And it, doing this increases the surface area of the lipids, allowing for quicker digestion. So one of the solutions proposed to helping fix these oil spill sort of things is to actually introduce surfactants into these areas with oil spills. Basically what this would do is it would create a colloid, uh, an emuls uh, emulsified you know, solution, to break up these large droplets of oil into very, very small ones so that microorganisms can actually just help digest the spilled oil and help clean up these places. However, if this surfactants really do have an effect on plant growth, if they really do have an effect on you know, taking water up through roots, this could have a negative impact on ecosystems uh, in aquatic environments. So that's obviously a bad thing. This is just another uh, diagram showing a micelle or micelle. So basically, if there's no oil in, in it, surfactants will arrange themselves into this. However, if there is oil, there will be an oil or nonpolar liquid within it actually segregating. This is just how uh, that would work. And I suppose something interesting, which doesn't really have anything to do with my experiment, though I thought it was pretty cool, was that actually what I've been talking about so far are surfactants with one head and one tail, right? But however, we've obviously all encountered the phospholipid, which is a head and two tails. So because there are two tails, it's more bulky. It doesn't actually form the micelle that was shown here. That can't happen because there's simply just not enough space. So what I thought was cool was that actually just if you got some water and you got some phospholipids and put it together, they would spontaneously form the phospholipid bilayer. So one of, one of the things that I was thinking about when you know, going through like cellular uh, biology was kind of how orderly the phospholipid bilayer is and how, kind of how did this actually come to be? You know, what are the implications of how life began from the phospholipid bilayer? But this actually just happened spontaneously. You just dump some stuff together and it'll form this phospholipid bilayer, which is, in my opinion, that's really cool. It, show, it says something about you know, the origins of life and how that could be very plausible even for seemingly absurd constructs.